in the last session we are done with membranous conjunctivities now let's talk about third type of bacterial conjunctivities that is nothing but the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so the pseudo membranous conjunctivities the name itself indicates that this is a type of conjunctivities which is characterized by the formation of false membrane pseudo is nothing but false that is this is a type of conjunctivities which is characterized by the formation of false membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva in most of the cases and in some cases on the bulbar conjunctiva now the question arises that who is the responsible for the formation of pseudo membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva that is nothing but the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so let's talk about the etiology of the pseudo membranous conjunctivities in the last session we are done with membranous conjunctivities now let's talk about third type of bacterial conjunctivities that is nothing but the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so the pseudo membranous conjunctivities the name itself indicates that this is a type of conjunctivities which is characterized by the formation of false membrane pseudo is nothing but false that is this is a type of conjunctivities which is characterized by the formation of false membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva in most of the cases and in some cases on the bulbar conjunctiva now the question arises that who is the responsible for the formation of pseudo membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva that is nothing but the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so let's talk about the etiology of the pseudo membranous conjunctivities in etiology the first point is nothing but age so which age group is most vulnerable to the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so mainly the children's are likely to be affected by the pseudo membranous conjunctivities and next point is nothing but sex so there is no any preference in the sexuality so both male as well as female are equally affected by the pseudo membranous conjunctivities then third point is nothing but the causative organism so in causative organism the main bacilli is nothing but klebs lofeller bacillus of low virulence can causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities after that the streptococcus hemolyticus streptococcus hemo lyticus after the streptococcus hemolyticus there is a staphylococcus aureus and last is that is nothing but pneumococci so in the etiology mostly the children are affected with the pseudo membranous conjunctivities and there is no any preference in the sexuality that male as well as female both are equally affected by the pseudo membranous conjunctivities and in causative organism the most likely bacteria which causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities is nothing but the klebs lofeller bacillus of low virulence after that there is a streptococcus hemolyticus staphylococcus aureus and pneumococci can also causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities the few bacilli can causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities some chemical irritants can also causes this type of conjunctivities the chemical irritants like ammonia lime or silver nitrate can causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so the chemical irritants like ammonia silver nitrate and lime this all chemical irritants can also causes the pseudo membranous conjunctivities that is nothing but ammonia silver nitrate and lime now let's go for the pathogenesis of the pseudo membranous conjunctivities the pathogenesis is same as the membranous conjunctivities again there is a same diagram it consists of piece of palpebral conjunctiva so in the pseudo membranous conjunctivities the causative organism or the main causative organism is nothing but klebs lofeller bacillus of low virulence suppose this klebs this is the klebs lofeller bacillus so once this klebs lofeller bacillus enters into the piece of palpebral conjunctiva this 
क्लेप्स लोफिलर बैसिलस फर्दर गोज टूवर्ड्स द पैरेंकाइमल सेल्स ऑफ द पल्पेबरल कंजक्टाइवा एंड डैमेजेस दिस पैरेंकाइमल सेल एंड वंस दिस पैरेंकाइमल सेल गेट डैमेज इट फर्दर रिलीजेस हिस्टामिन्स लिकोट्राइन एंड प्रोस्टाग्लैंडिन एंड ऑल अदर केमिकल मेडिएटर्स सो दिस सिक्रिटेड केमिकल मेडिएटर्स फर्दर गोज एंड बाइंड्स टू रिसेप्टर व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द स्मूथ मसल once this receptors get fulfilled by the histamine leukotriene and prostaglandin this smooth muscles get relaxed and once this smooth muscle get relaxed the arterial end get dilated so the arterial end get dilated and once this arterial end get dilated the more and more blood comes into the capillary and once this capillary contain a more amount of blood volume the hydrostatic pressure that is nothing but the capillary blood pressure get rises so the hydrostatic pressure as we know the hydrostatic pressure is outward driving force so it outwardly forces this plasma proteins outside the blood vessel so this plasma proteins came outside the blood capillary so these are the secreted plasma protein as well as this hydrostatic pressure outwardly drives the fibrin as well as inflammatory cells comes outside the blood vessel as well as some polymorphs also the come came outside the blood vessel so this plasma protein fibrin and inflammatory cells and polymorphs are collectively called as exudative fluid so this exudative fluid comes in the interstitial space of the palpebral conjunctiva it will further causes the edema of the palpebral conjunctiva and this exudative fluid forms a membrane one particular membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva because this exudative fluid further coagulates and forms the membrane on the palpebral conjunctiva so let's discuss the difference between the true membrane and the false membrane so again this is the histology of conjunctiva this is the palpebral conjunctiva and this is the bulbar conjunctiva and these are the inferior fornix and this is the superior fornix so this is what a true membrane so the true membrane is that membrane whose 50% part or half of the part is embedded in a palpebral conjunctiva or in a substance of palpebral conjunctiva and half of the part is outside the substance of palpebral conjunctiva so in any attempt to remove this true membrane mechanically it will cause a bleeding because its half part in the palpebral conjunctiva second membrane is nothing but the pseudo membrane so the pseudo membrane is that type of membrane which is not embedded in a substance of palpebral conjunctiva so 100% part of pseudo membrane is outside the palpebral conjunctiva so in any attempt to remove this pseudo membrane it will not causes any bleeding because it is not embedded in a substance of palpebral conjunctiva so what are the signs and symptoms of the pseudo membranous conjunctivities so in the pseudo membranous conjunctivities it will shows all the signs and symptoms of acute catarrhal conjunctivities that is nothing but the acute inflammatory signs the acute inflammatory signs consisting of first is pain so there is a mild to severe pain occur in the pseudo membranous conjunctivities pain it must be a mild or in some cases it may be a severe so the first point is nothing but pain second is hot that is nothing but elevation in the local temperature third sign is nothing but edema of the lids and this edema is generally caused due to the extra vasation of the exudative fluid the extra vasation of the exudative fluid it will further causes the edema of the lids and the fourth point is the redness of the conjunctiva particularly a palpebral conjunctiva so all the acute inflammatory signs are seen in the pseudo membranous conjunctivities along with the acute inflammatory sign there will be a formation of pseudo membrane on palpebral conjunctiva mainly on the tarsal con conjunctiva which is a part of a 
palpebral conjunctiva so there will be a formation of membrane but this membrane is nothing but the false membrane or pseudo membrane so this membrane is somewhat look like yellowish white in color look like yellowish white in color and this membrane is not embedded in a palpebral conjunctiva it is 100% free from the palpebral conjunctiva any attempt in removing this membrane it will not causes any bleeding let's go for the clinical course of pseudomembranous conjunctivitis so the clinical course of pseudomembranous conjunctivitis in 10 to 12 days from infection so after the 10 to 12 days after infection the membrane that is pseudo membrane on the tarsal conjunctiva get peeled off pseudo membrane get peeled off so once the infection occurs in 10 to 12 days after the infection the pseudo membrane which is forms on the tarsal conjunctiva get filled off and after that the picture of acute cateral conjunctivitis persist so the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis further shows uh, signs of the acute cattle conjunctivitis. So let's go for the diagnostic criteria of the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis. So the first diagnostic criteria is nothing but in the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis all the acute inflammatory signs will be seen. Acute inflammatory signs as well as the signs are correlating with the signs of acute cattle conjunctivitis so the signs similar to the acute cattle conjunctivitis are seen and the second diagnostic criteria is nothing but the formation of membrane and that membrane is 100 percent of pseudo membrane or a false membrane and it is yellowish white in color so any patient came towards you with this two criteria that is nothing but the signs of acute inflammation or the signs similar to the acute cattle conjunctiva and the membrane that is pseudo membrane on the tarsal conjunctiva which is look like yellowish white in color so this patient we can diagnose with the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis as part of the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis that is nothing but the management so in the management part as like as the acute cattle conjunctivitis in the pseudomembranous conjunctivitis there is no need to remove the membrane there is no need to remove the membrane because in 10 to 12 days after infection membrane get peeled off so this is all about the pseudomembranous conjunctivities.